because this is the view most of our competitors are going to see. The gaming technology yeah. that does Rocket League yeah. is powering this. The drift break. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we've got Jim Owens here. This guy is the Mustang expert, and we're gonna get a walk around of the all new Mustang Dark Horse. Take it away, Jim. I'm so glad to hear to be here, and this seventh generation Mustang with the Dark Horse, the, the Mustang you didn't see coming. Um, there are so many cool things on this. I mean, the seventh generation is by far the pinnacle of Mustang that we've done, and this is the pinnacle of performance on the seventh generation. And if you take a walk around down here, this is the blue ember with the appearance pack and the handling pack okay. and the painted stripes. So this is the fully loaded one. This is the fully loaded one. But one of the cool things on here, and you know, the, the nose comes down a little bit more. Um, the front lower is different than the base Mustang as well. What we were trying to design is, you know, airflow. Well, first it has to look unmistakably Mustang. Yes. Second, it has to look fast standing still. Third, you have to have the downforce and the lower co higher downforce, lower coefficient of drag, and you still have to cool it for the track, right? This is a car you can literally drive once you do your braking miles, <laughs> like, and take it out and go to the track for a track day. Yes. So those three things with the change in the front end, you know, the pony on the front, even though it's a dark horse here, right? The, the pony on the front with the air extractor, but the way they did the stripes, is if you think of when we put it through wind tunnels and with the the smoke or the the not smoke but the, the, like the, the air, air that goes vapor, through the think, vapor right? yeah. that comes across there this takes the patterns of what that air looks like when you're going through the wind tunnel in a painted basis that you know highlights some of the power dome where the hood where the air is a little closer and here where it's a little bit so it's lighter so they've really done some really cool things and that's from, painted. Yeah, these are the painted stripes. Not vinyl. Okay. Not the vinyl. There, there is a vinyl stripe option. Gotcha. Vinyl for the base, and then you can do the appearance package with half the vinyl, and then you can also do the painted stripes on there as well. That's pretty cool. Um, which is really kind of cool. And as yeah. you go around, these are the carbon fiber wheels. Yes, sir. Um, we work with Carbon Revolution. So Carbon Revolution did the 350R wheels back in 2015, 2016, yep. et cetera, that generation. Um, those were painted, yes. right? Because the UV light would break down the carbon. We've learned, we did it on the Ford GT. Yes. We can do a clear coat now that actually protects it so you can see the weave. In here, you have the five bolt lug nut pattern like on the standard Mustang. Yeah. That we're, the first time we've done that on the inset. Then you also have the blue in there as well. Wait. So there is actually blue in the in the carbon fiber on the wheel. Oh yeah. To tie to the blue ember. You can, it's a little. I see. I was confused because there's blue yeah. lighting the, right we now. Have the blue light yeah, on there. but. But then you can see the caliper, the unique, you know, six piston Brembo, the unique caliper color for the dark horse in the appearance package in there. Now. Unsprung rotational mass is the best weight to lose. You know, I'm a dad bod, right? My best weight to lose is here. <laughs> In a car on the track, unsprung rotational mass is the best weight to lose. Yes. This will reduce it by about 37%. That's a big margin. Uh, 21 pounds, 20, just under 21 pounds of reduction. Yeah. Now, I'm a decent driver, yeah. not a great driver. Um, when you, you, the better you get, the, the more you can repeatable do faster lap times with that weight reduction, which is really cool. I'm noticing it's on Trofeo RS is not Cup 2. Yes, we've switched from Michelin this year on okay. this one for the for the Pirellis and um, the the compound in the tread that was worked on for specifically for this vehicles. Um, they are the Trofeos and the RSs yeah. for the handling package. Okay. Um, which is which is nice. Um, you can still see on the inside of the carbon fiber, right? The, the ceramic. The ceramic material. That's yep. the NASA based, you know, yep. to, the, for the re-entry heat to protect from it. When we did the 350s first, they'd see it on the front wheels and not on the rears, and they said, yeah. "Oh, my car is misbuilt." Yep. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, the six pistons are the ones generating the heat. The rear isn't generating it as much. Of course, the dark horse badge. Now that is the first forward-facing pony we've put on it, right? We've had the Tiffany snake. Ever. For the first, we've had the Tiffany snake okay. on the Mustangs. You've had the pony with the tri-bar. Yeah. You've had the corral pony, the pony running left to right across yeah. there. 
this is that horse you didn't see coming. And what the designers did with this, as you see in the nostril design, airflow is one of those things that helps the performance not only of the horse, yeah. but of the internal combustion engine Mustang, fifth yep. generation Coyote, yep. 500 horsepower, natural fourth generation Coyote, 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated. Yep. 100 horsepower per liter. Yeah. So they did that design because yeah. airflow is so important. And if you see a horse running, like in the Kentucky Derby or Mustang Wild running, they're breathing through those nostrils and they flare. And they did a good job of kept, of, of capturing that. Nice. And it's that, that horse you didn't see coming. Um, one of the cool things in here on the manual transmission. The titanium shift the knob. The titanium shift knob. Um, that is, you know, you've seen the cue ball ones that we've done, oh, yeah. and like the old Ford Racing, the aluminum ones that yep. you've done. One of the things on there is it gets really pretty hot. Yeah. So this one is hollow, so it helps keep it cooler from the air in there. Okay. Made out of the titanium and blue to offset the colors, as you see the blue stitching in the Recaro, the stitching along the seats, the stitching along here, the blue in the carbon, the, the, yeah. the, the carbon pattern. So it really ties it in together and it's most unique shift knob we've that ever done, really which cool. is pretty cool. Hollow titanium anodized blue. And then we have the, the drift, drift brake. brake. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like a parking brake, but yes. it is a drift brake. Electronic drift brake. Yes. So and, lock up the rear wheels. Um, so, well, it is oh. set by Chelsea and Vaughn. Yeah, RTR. Who did, yeah, Vaughn is a Formula Drift champion. Working with the engineers, and we have the video footage of it, and okay. we're gonna go out there and show it to people, which is pretty cool. Sitting in there, engineers in the passenger seat, hooked into the computer, changing the brake bias to set it up so that you can learn to start drifting and then get better as you go. Okay. Which is incredible. You know, Vaughn told me I was untrainable as a drifter. Oh, well. This makes me <laughs> capable of doing the drifting. Technology does magic. Yes, it does. And some of the technology that's in there from the interior, you know, that Mustang interior is completely different from the generations before it. Yes. Right? They used to have the double brow, right? Yep. That came in there, was the same from the passenger it was, was the driver. Here with the technology that we've done, you have the 13.2 inch center stack yep. and then the gauge cluster behind one piece of glass wrapped in the magnesium and it's powered by the Unreal Gaming technology. So, so amazing the, the, graphics. The gaming technology yeah. that does Rocket League yeah. is powering this where you can actually, it'll show you when you change the exhaust, when you change the suspension, it lights up and then changes, shows you what it's changing when you change the mode. That's cool. So it is the current version of personalization yep. in the technological age, which is incredible, a lot of fun. Um, in the back here, you know, you have the, the gurney flap on the hand package, right? Yep. That increases the downforce where you really want the downforce at speed if you're running at Elkhart Lake yep. or, you know, running at Laguna yeah, on the back track, stretch. Yep. You want to have that downforce on there. Then the, the dark horse badge on the back, you know, the, the, the concave version of the pony yeah. tri bar, which really gives it a different look. Um, it, it's not much wider than the outgoing. Right, but it looks like it's sitting in that powerful position. Yep. Uh, the belt line lowered. You know, Chris and the design team lowered the belt line. That kind of because this is the view most of our competitors are going to see. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, and, <laughs> Throwing a little bit and of shade. Go, Just a little bit. I mean, in there. Um, and then the other thing that we did was the um, quad exhaust, active valve exhaust. Okay. And you can see the color that we did the darker the black to make yeah. it that more sinister, dark horse esque. Um, so that's kind of the dark horse in a nutshell, and we're really excited about it. So as I mentioned earlier, I am a 350R owner and former, Bo former Boss 302 Laguna Seca owner. How does this stack up to previous super high performance ones? It sounds like a Mach 1 evolved even better. Um, it, it, it's almost revolutionary versus evolutionary. We did take a lot of the learnings, right? We spent a lot of time on that sixth generation chassis, improving the performance, even like the 350 as we approved from the 2015, the 137 yep. did, and 16 model year four. We kept improving it. Stuff we were learning from 350 or development of 500 yep. came in, the steering rack change that came in and late in the 350. All of that learning and all that engineering team, you know, Eddie Kahn and Nick Terzis yeah. and Del Zio and, you know, Victor and Tim Smith and all the people who are in there, they've taken all of those learnings and have put it into this 500 horsepower. So it's, you know, new Magna Ride suspension, okay. new calibration associated with it, new braking aspects to it. That is going to give it, you know, this is going to be the pinnacle of Mustang five liter performance we have ever done. So we will supersede the Mach 1 
for sure. Uh, I'm, I, we are excited. <laughs> I can't get this yeah, guy to commit we, to anything. We, right? are, we are excited <laughs> about it and good. can't wait for you guys to drive good. it. Good. Jim, I appreciate it. Thank you so Thanks much, Thanks so sir. much. It's always good chatting with a Thank Mustang you. fan. Appreciate it. So that was a fantastic walk around with Jim hearing about the Mustang Dark Horse. I'm going to get up close with it, take a look at it in person because I've only briefly saw this at Barrett Jackson. So let's take a look. The paint is absolutely epic. It's like this color shift. You can see a lot of that gold, almost bronze metallic flake to it. I'm super impressed they're doing painted stripes too because that makes it much more complex. On the GT500, if you get painted stripes, it adds a lot to the cost. Pricing is not officially released yet, but I think this will be just under 60K, like $58,000. But it definitely is unmistakably a Mustang, just super modernized, very angular styling, whereas the previous gens maybe had a bit more of the curves. It is absolutely growing on me in person. I'm gonna be biased, I love my 350R, it's my favorite looking one, but this dark horse is pretty badass. And the other big, big piece of news, we touched upon it, is the carbon fiber wheels. They're exposed carbon weave, five spoke design, and they've got these little like aero fins there on the side too, so a really unique look to it. I'm surprised they went to Pirelli Trofeos because the Michelins are so awesome. Really wide aggressive stance there, so definitely wide front and rear tires. Let me actually check and see if I can see the size. So 315, 30, 19s in the back. So 315s, that's I think GT 350R sizing. And then the fronts are gonna be 305. So this is essentially I think 350R tire width. So that's definitely pretty aggressive. And again, this paint, it changes a lot. It'll be cool to see this in the daylight. Big wing out back. And then the tail lights are Again, that iconic tri-bar taillight, but much more angular and modernized. The inside is the huge changes for the latest generation Mustang, right? So we've got the dark horse on the door sill here. <laughs> okay, actually, there are a lot of changes, but then you look at some things. This is still, I think, identical to mine. So some things change, some things don't need to change. The digital cluster, that's a huge difference. So we have this big virtual cluster. Now, I think the... Previous gen, uh, the GT500 had a digital cluster here, but it's not this merged entire just panoramic screen across. The graphics are gonna be truly impressive from what I've seen and heard. New steering wheel here. And then that anodized blue shifter. Titanium, that's hollow, that's pretty cool. And I believe this one has a Tremec, which means no MT82 transmission problems. Recaro seats. Some light, a lot of blue accents. I like that part of it. So there's a look at the all new Mustang Dark Horse 2024, the highest performance iteration of the Coyote ever. 500 horsepower, 418 pound feet of torque, rear wheel drive, available with a manual transmission, available with a drift brake. The styling I think is pretty cool. The carbon wheels are definitely cool. They will be pricey probably between eight to $10,000 as an option on the Dark Horse. I am very much excited to drive one of these compared to my Shelby, compared to the outgoing Mach 1. See what it's like, but it was absolutely cool to see it at the Chicago Auto Show. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.